The Tale of the Dragon and the Cherahela Skyway are two very popular scenic roads in the mountains of western North Carolina and eastern Tennessee. Each is famous for being amazing driving routes, although they do have some various characteristics. And we're gonna talk a little bit about their layout in terms of where they are in the mountains and how they're situated and how the roads were designed. So to start with, the Cherahela Skyway has a much higher elevation. The high point reaches over a mile, around somewhere around 5,385 feet is the maximum elevation, where the Tell of the Dragon, the high point is under 2,000 feet, but it's much more famous for its horizontal curve. So the turning left and right as you move along the roadway instead of the up and down. And one way you can see this is if we just change the perspective, we're kind of looking at an angle here. We're mostly from a plan view perspective where we're looking down on the surface of the ground. But if we actually change our perspective here and we're gonna zoom in a little bit. And instead of looking from above, we're gonna look kind of a, more along the ground level. And this really gives us a, a good perspective of the mountains that the Cherahela Skyway is climbing. It starts at Santilla Gap, and that actually has an elevation that's actually higher than the highest point on the Dragon. It's at about 2,600 feet in elevation. And it, the Cherahela Skyway climbs along the ridge of the mountain purposefully for a scenic byway built this way to give great views uh, to the drivers and connecting Robbinsville, North Carolina to Teleco Plains, Tennessee. The name is a mashup of the two national forests that it connects, the Cherokee National Forest in Tennessee and the Nanahala National Forest in North Carolina. And so again, we see that that design is meant to climb the mountain instead of finding the lowest point and going through the mountains or between the mountains. And we can see over here for the tell of the dragon, we actually have much more of that type of perspective going on where we see the, the roadway actually trying to find the low points. This is US 129. And so when it was built, it was meant really to connect these and serve that transportation purpose, not as much as trying to be designed for a scenic byway, but just connecting as a road connecting North Carolina to Tennessee. And so we see the elevation is, is pretty consistent throughout the dragon. It's not a lot of up and down. There's lots of left and right turning, so lots of horizontal curvature. And we can see that if we actually look from above, it's a very curvy road, uh, very famous for its curves. There's 318 curves in the 11 mile section that is officially referred to as the dragon that goes from Dills Gap, which is near the border of North Carolina and Tennessee. And it's called a gap because it is the, a gap in between those mountain peaks. So it's trying to fit between those, that lowest point possible for a to serve that transportation purpose all the way to Tabcat Bridge on the other end. So 11 miles, 318 curves. Now, certainly the Skyway has a lot of curves. It's built in the mountains. So you're gonna see a lot of curvature, but they are generally more gentle curves. There are also wide shoulders, which, which do give a, a more gentle curvature type of, of appearance for a driver. And it is a much longer route. So from Santilla Gap into Teleco Plains to the visitor center, it's a 41, 42 mile long route. Whereas again, that main section of the Dragon is 11 miles. And a lot of people actually do both of these in the same day. You can kind of do a loop and then drive on both of these. So a, a couple of great options for driving routes, very different characteristics though. So if you do get a chance to drive on both of these, look for those different perspectives. The Cherahela Skyway, you're gonna see great scenic overlooks and those changes in elevation going from Santilla Gap at around 2,600 feet in elevation to a peak at over a mile down to under 900 feet in elevation in Tennessee. Whereas for the Dragon, you're going to start at just under 2,000 feet in elevation, and you're going to be doing a lot of turning to the left and right, so horizontal curvature, and still having some, some drop in elevation into Tennessee at under 900 feet. 
So if you've been on either or both of these roads, let me know in the comments about your experience. If you have any favorite places on these roads, I'd love to hear from you.